Each season I have a couple staple videos here on my channel, one being my top blanks for seasonal decor that you can find at Dollar Tree. Well today we're doing it again, we're doing it for Christmas, and I've got so many ideas for you that you can easily put together for Christmas for gifts, decor, and everything in between, so stay tuned. This is Whiskey and Wit, my name's Whitney, and on this channel I love to share tips, tricks, and tutorials all around DIYs and budget home decor. I want to help you get a DIY home that you love on a budget, so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wit video. A huge thank you to Ana Luisa Jewelry for partnering with me on this video. We'll talk more about them and the gorgeous jewelry I'm wearing in just a little bit, but first let's get into the DIYs. I'm using my Cricut Maker today, but you can use any Cricut machine. You could also use any other vinyl cutting machine to do this. I'll let you know with this flag up in the corner which files are for free download. And if you are new to Cricut, I just did a whole video breaking it down on how to make a vinyl decal. That's all Christmas projects. So you can head over to that video for help and tips and tricks on how to cut out vinyl decals. Now let's get into it. The first one are gonna be these beautiful two-toned wood cutouts. I did these for fall and I absolutely love them so I knew I had to bring them back for this video. I decided to do a tree and an ornament but Dollar Tree has a ton of different sizes. If you can't find these at Dollar Tree, you can also look at a Hobby Lobby, a Michaels, a Joann's, they have them as well. After my items are stained, I'm going through with just some regular old painter's tape. You can use masking tape too, but the goal here is to get about center on your image and we're gonna do a two-tone. So half stained, half painted. I'm doing the bottom of my ornament red and just some chalk paint. And then I'm using this green that I had on hand in acrylic paint to do the bottom of my tree. Once those are dry, you can just peel off the painter's tape and reveal a beautiful, crisp, clean line. And then we're gonna add a decal to both of them. Now, both of these are free downloads over on my blog. Also, if you're new to Whiskey and Wit, I have a full video on how to get them, how to download them, how to import them into your cutting software. It's like a three minute video, so I will link that down below as well. Another thing you'll see me using throughout this video is this transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl. This is my absolute favorite, especially when I'm working with a lot of mediums, especially painted mediums like I am here, painted and stained. I don't wanna pull up all that paint. So I'm just using this lighter stick paper transfer tape. You can reuse it a few times and it works super well. I absolutely love it for these projects because you're able to put this really pretty decal on and not have to worry about peeling up everything. I also used a white matte vinyl here. It's permanent and it turned out really great on this sign. This is a new blank that I have not done before, but I saw them in the store and thought they would make really great blanks, and they are these spatulas. Now, Dollar Tree has a few different kinds. I decided to go with the plastic handle, but you could also find the ones with the wood handle. You just want the silicone top. You could probably stick it on other things, but to get the same look, I'm going for the silicone top. And both the Grinch file as well as the hot cocoa one I am adding here with permanent vinyl are both available for free over on my blog. I just use some leftover paper transfer tape, but you could use any transfer tape here because you're not worried about a painted surface. I sized them to two inches in width because that was about the area that I could cover on my spatula. I quickly applied them and they stuck really well. If you're worried about anything popping off, you could use some Mod Podge and also I think it goes without saying, but these are then not usable with the vinyl on them, but I plan to use them as decor. All right, this sign speaks to my soul. I love Christmas baking as well as Christmas music. I've seen this sign a lot with Christmas movies, but I decided to make my own. So I used this tray from Dollar Tree that I had from a project a while ago that I didn't end up using, and it's just stained with dark walnut stain. Then I sized this file to four inches wide. This is a free file that I designed and I just cut it out in some white matte vinyl and added my paper transfer tape because we're working with that stained surface. Once it was all squeegee down, peeled off the back, and then I applied it a little bit to one side because you'll see we're gonna add a cute little Dollar Tree whisk to finish it off. If you don't want the whisk, then you can size it to closer to five inches wide and it will fill the whole sign. I added just a little bit of candy cane ribbon that matches my gingerbread dining room to the end of the whisk, hot glued it down, and then finished it off with some red and white baker's twine from Amazon. 
This is a super cute DIY for about three bucks. This would also be a cute thing to give as a gift with some cookies or some other fun gingerbread stuff. The sky's the limit and this sign is so cute. Let's take a quick break from crafting and talk about today's sponsor, Ana Luisa Jewelry. Beyond their really pretty jewelry that has stood up to all the paces I've put it through, they are also committed to sustainability. That means throughout the whole life cycle of making their products, they are both carbon and water neutral, which is huge to help protecting the environment and that really aligns with my values. They sent me three new pieces to add to my growing Ana Luisa collection that I could share with you guys. The first being this mama necklace. I absolutely love this. I've had this for a long time and I plan to gift some of these this holiday season to my mom friends. It's really nice, it's not too gaudy and it's great to throw on and pull together an outfit. I also absolutely love these earrings. They are so fun. They're kind of an ear climber. They're really easy to pop on and they look really elevated without having to try too hard. I absolutely love rings for my right hand and this one is another one I can add to my collection. It is super pretty, especially with a little toddler running around. I can't have anything too crazy, so this is perfect. All the details you need will be down in the description to either treat yourself or grab gifts or even do a mixture of both. Now let's get back into the DIYs. Now this year I wanted to make some fun gift tags because I have themed gifts for a lot of people. However, I was unable to find what I was looking for so I decided to DIY it. Again, this is something that you would easily find in another craft store if you can't find them at Dollar Tree. I know Hobby Lobby has them, Michaels, and they're just a couple bucks versus the dollar. I cut out a variety of files. I did two bluey tags for Finn because it's really hard to find any bluey stuff. To find this image, I just Googled bluey coloring pages and that gave me that that I could then cut out. I also did this Griswold file. I did a Mary Grinchmas. I also did an elf one. And so these are all gonna be themed out and Finn loved it so much that he couldn't wait for me to get the footage. He had to grab the bluey tag right away. If you've been around a while, this one is an oldie but a goodie and I love transforming these signs. I'm gonna be so sad when Dollar Tree doesn't sell them anymore. I think I've made the loop almost for the full year. I've got cut files for every season with this sign. I made a hot cocoa one and both on my channel and when I shared it on Instagram, you guys loved it. And so they are just these unfinished signs from the Dollar Tree sign section. You could also use their unfinished wood arrows. I painted mine with two coats of acrylic green paint and then I cut out this file on my favorite matte white vinyl, but you could use whatever color that you want. I sized this to 10 inches wide and I ended up applying it a little bit closer to the point of the arrow, just so I had a little breathing room to add some jute twine to finish it off. Again, we're using the paper transfer tape because we're on a painted surface, wrapping around that jute twine and calling it a day. I actually took the hot cocoa version and just put it into my gingerbread tree. So there are a ton of different things you can do with it. So you can either do the tree farm or the hot cocoa, which is painted in red. Super cute. This ornament is so quick and easy to put together and you're gonna love it if you are an elf fan. So this starts with one of this Etch-A-Sketch little doodles from Dollar Tree. And I had this particular file from my elf themed video. So if you've missed that, I will link that for you. But this one is available over at A Girl and Her Glue Gun. So I will link that, but you can use really any elf inspired design. I did two inches tall here with some black matte vinyl, and then I just finished it off with some hot glue on the back, added some jute twine so I could hang it as an ornament, and it is ready to go up on your tree. If you wanna add a little more pizzazz, you could definitely add ribbon, but I like it as it is. I also like how bright the red and yellow are, so it pops, it looks whimsy, and it fits perfect in the area with our movie ornaments. You can see Clark Griswold hiding up in the left-hand corner as well, so we've got our bases covered. So this next one was inspired by another creator and I loved it so much I had to make it myself. So Kristen K recently made something similar for a hot cocoa bar and when I saw it, I knew I had to make one. So I started with three of these boxes from the Crafter Square section and just used some Gorilla wood glue to hook the three together. Now the middle one is only stained because I had it for another project and didn't end up using it. So you don't have to stain it, you can paint them all unfinished. Then I painted the entire thing with two coats of Waverly chalk paint. You could probably get away with one coat if you didn't have a random stained crate like I did, but you know, you win some, you lose some, I'm trying to use up my stash so my house doesn't get taken over. 
Then I adapted the hot cocoa decal from that red arrow sign I just showed you to put it on the front of these boxes. So this one is another one that will be available for you to download. And I just ended up sizing it to 11 inches, I believe. But you just wanna make sure that you measure every time that you create a decal and that's gonna make it so it fits perfectly. I also don't go the full size of my area because that will make it really easy for you to have something too big. So that's what I like to do. Once that's applied, I added some of these super cute little candy cane spoons that I found at Dollar Tree. I did my faux marshmallows in the center, and then I put some K-cup coffee in there to hold the spot until I get some hot cocoa. But we have a party coming up and I wanna do a hot cocoa bar, so I thought this would be great to kind of corral everything. Three bucks, you can't go wrong. And huge thank you to Kristen for the idea. Be sure to check out her channel, it will be linked down below. I absolutely love just a good stained sign with some white vinyl on it. And this one, I wanted to make it a little bit bigger. So I took two of these trays and I took some wood glue and put it down the center and clamped them together so they would stay. You could also use super glue. You could use E6000. I decided to do the wood glue. Just make sure that it's not like going to spew out any edge because the stain will not really cover wood glue. Then I took some dark walnut stain and stained the entire thing so that I had a blank canvas to work with. In my last video that I mentioned before with all the Christmas vinyl decals, I bought a bundle from Design Bundles and this was in there. So I decided I might as well get the bang for my buck for what I purchased. I will link that down below. I think it's like insane, 20 or 30 files for like five bucks. Don't fully quote me, but I will link it down below. So many of you have grabbed that SVG bundle from them, so I wanted to also share this in case you happen to have bought it. You can use this. I just sized it to the width and then applied it, and this is so beautiful. I absolutely love it. You guys know I work super hard to kind of incorporate some of the true meaning of Christmas for our family into our decor. That also then leads me to my next one, which is a makeover of this unfinished wood cross. I did one of these for Easter and you guys loved it. I loved it. And so I decided to make a Christmas version. I started by staining it with my favorite dark walnut, but you could paint or stain or do whatever. I did the words Christ the Savior is born across the middle part of the cross. And then I also added a little baby manger as well as some stars to make it look like the nativity. I did just baby Jesus instead of like a holy family situation because the real estate we're working with here, let's be honest, is not super large. And so you don't want to be trying to cut that out. So just did the little manger, a big star. And as you see here, it's going to be one file, but you can kind of place them so that it fits because trying to get that to cut and fit perfectly is a huge pain. Once my cross had all the vinyl on it, I just added some Dollar Tree jute twine as well as a couple unfinished wood beads that I had. I buy mine off Amazon, you guys always ask, and I get a multi-pack. Then I wrapped jute twine around my four fingers about 40 times, gave it a little cut, cut another piece, and you're gonna put that through your little loop that you just made to create the top of your tassel. I like to give three or four knots just to make sure if Finn grabs it, that thing's not going anywhere. Then I wrapped another piece of jute twine around the top and tied that a few times to create the head of my tassel. And then once everything is tightened, you're just gonna trim the edges. So cut the loops in half so you've got your fringe and then you can do any sort of like haircut that you need to give your tassel. Once it was where I wanted it, I used the end of the strand jute cord as well as the end of my tassel. Gave that another three or four knots and you were good to go. I love how these will work together or you could just make one or the other. I really love both of these. Okay, so you guys know I love Christmas Vacation. We also love Elf in My House because it's one of my husband's favorite Christmas movies. And so I thought this would be so fun to make for Finn. I grabbed a mixing bowl from Dollar Tree and then I got this file off of Etsy. It says son of a nutcracker with the little elf hat. And that's what Will Ferrell's character Buddy says in the movie when he gets hit with a snowball when he's doing the snowball fight with his brother. And so I thought it would be funny. I also cut out the words snowball fight. So it says son of a nutcracker snowball fight and I just applied it to the side of my container. If multiple colors kind of worry you, you could definitely cut this out as one color. You don't need to do the separate colors, but 
I do have information on how to do a multi-color vinyl decal in that other video I mentioned. And so that's a really great resource for you if you're new to Cricut and want to make these. Then Dollar Tree also had some of these awesome snowballs. So I grabbed five packs of those. Hobby Lobby for sure has them as well. But I thought for $6, this is a fun decor piece as well as a fun little game. We can have an indoor snowball fight with Finn and make some Christmas memories, which I just love, love, love. All right, next one. So this is actually a gift for my best friend. So Virginia, if you saw this video, no, you didn't. <laughs> but I wanted to take one of these ornaments and create a big Grinch glitter ornament. So I did that with polycrylic and some glitter from Walmart. And I only really do this with fine glitter. You can also use mop and glow in place of this polycrylic. I just stain and seal signs all the time. So I had this already on hand. You're gonna take a spoon, syringe, funnel, whatever you have, and put in enough polycrylic into your plastic ornament. You can also do this with glass or your mop and glow, whatever your sticking substance is. Make sure you can roll it around and coat the entire ornament. What you're doing here is basically putting down a layer of Mod Podge, essentially, if you wanna think of it that way, inside your ornament. Sit it upside down in a cup like I did for about a minute, just let everything drain. And then here I finally wised up and got a funnel from the last time I shared these with you guys. I added the glitter and then shook it out and added the extra glitter back into the container. You're gonna let it dry like this for at least an hour, but longer if you can. So then that way you can put the lid on and not bust off all the glitter. This is the same Grinch face from the spatulas. It is just cut in black vinyl and a little bit bigger. I did three inches wide. And here I'm just using my Expressions Vinyl Clear Transfer Tape because I don't have to worry about peeling off that glitter because it's on the inside. Then to get this to apply without bubbles on a curved surface, I'm just cutting some slits in my transfer tape. So then that way, when you're feeling like you're gonna hit a bubble, it's just going to go to that slit versus putting a groove or bubble in your vinyl. Now, word to the wise, it happens to everyone. You may have to repurpose something because a curved surface is not the easiest to work with. But once you get it applied, this thing is so cute. I'm so excited. I have a decent amount of Grinch inspired stuff for my best friend. So hopefully if she sees this, she will still act surprised. But I wanted to share it with you guys because I figured you'd love it too. If you guys saw my Dollar Tree haul at the beginning of the season, I found these sleds and I was waiting for this video to show what to do with them. I thought this front area that was nice and flat would take a decal beautifully. So originally I was just going to do dark stain with some white vinyl. Well, wah, wah. I got some weird like markings and I'm pretty sure it's because Dollar Tree has a little bit lower production quality dare i say it and their wood glue kind of went everywhere so to fix that i decided to do the front of one red as well as the little bar at the top and then i did one in black as well that way my vinyl would pop and i covered up any of those weird uneven staining chunks it was just too icky looking for me to leave it then I picked two of my favorite files that I've done in previous videos to put them on these sleds. One says sleigh bells ring, are you listening, on the red. And then on the black I did walking in a winter wonderland. So again, both of these free files for you and they're really easy to download. You can just head over to my blog and grab all of them and then you can choose what you want to use. It's really easy to take some Dollar Tree items and make them look more high-end than when you purchase them. You just kind of have to know what you're looking for and so that's what I hope to share in these videos for you. If you're still watching also too, leave me a comment down below. What's your favorite blank right now at Dollar Tree? I would love to know. Speaking of favorite blanks, number 13 is one of my absolute favorites lately and it is this pizza pan to make over in two hangers. I just painted one to look like a snowman in a previous video, I will link that for you. But this one, I decided to give it a coat of some flat black spray paint so it looked like a chalkboard. And then I found this beautiful round file over at Kaluuya Designs. It's a free download and you just cut it out to the size of the pizza pan. If you use a Dollar Tree pizza pan, I would say size it to 11 inches wide and it's gonna fit perfectly in here. I'm using my white matte vinyl and my paper transfer tape and unfortunately I had a little teeny teeny hiccup here where I peeled off a little bit of the paint. However, I was able to go right in with a, just a little bit of black chalk paint and you can't even tell. 
to hang it up, I did the same thing that I've been doing on all my other projects. I do two huge gobs of hot glue and then I put the jute twine down, put the glue on top of it. And then I let that cool and I've never had a problem with it. I wouldn't hang anything too heavy, but these signs are super light. Then I decided to do a super quick bow that I've seen a ton of people do. You guys, I am not skilled in bows, but I just decided to wing this and I think it turned out pretty cute. So I did two pieces of a long ribbon, two pieces of a medium, and two pieces of a small, or I guess the smallest width. I dovetailed all of the ends and then I realized that my pieces were too big so I cut them down to more like four inch pieces, re-dovetailed those ends so that's basically just kind of cutting out the little carrot and then I stacked them all up, pinched the center and tied it with some jute twine. There's no tying other than tying the jute twine. Now because they're all wired ribbon it makes it super easy you can just kind of puff them out and then glue it down. Also, Jennifer over at A Little Bit of Calm and Crazy shared a really easy bow. So if you want a actual wreath bow, she showed one with a zip tie that's so easy. So I will link that video down below if you want to check that out as well. Love the pizza pans and they're all over my house this season. If you're not a wreath person or don't need a door hanger, here's an idea to add a little bit of pizzazz but not have to go too large. Dollar Tree has these nice metal signs. You could also do just the everyday ones. They've got everyday plaques. But I just did the same little decal that I created for those tags and I added this cotton headed ninny muggins that I already had but again you could do whatever movie you want like if you're a Christmas story person if you're a home alone person we just like elf so I decided to go that route if you purchase the SVG or you get one for free your machine will tell you what color vinyl to load and when which makes it really easy to cut it out you know, I had to finish it off with a candy cane themed ribbon because those elves, they like candy, candy canes, candy corn, and syrup. Again, you could do any movie, any show. If you like Friends, Grey's Anatomy, all the things, you can find an SVG to put on these awesome blanks. Another quick idea if you're more a tiered tray person are these tags. These again take paint or stain super easily. This Tis the Season was a part of that big massive bundle that I've been talking about that I will link for you. But I wanted to use these because I ended up paying for all those files so I wanted to try to use as many as I could. And so the nice thing is if you do like these files that I ended up using you could easily cut them out to size and apply them. These will fit a wide variety of tiered trays. This is actually the small one that Walmart's selling for $15 right now, and it fits really well. So this will fit kind of whatever setup you are looking to do. They also have round ones and other shapes too. Two things that I absolutely love to do with my Cricut. One, etch things. Two, screen print things. And I'm going to have both of those before this video is over. First being etching. So I grabbed a large and a small glass plate from the houseware section at Dollar Tree. And I decided to cut out that same file that I used on my sled. So the sleigh bells ring, are you listening? But I cut it out backwards. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to stencil the etching onto my plate, but I wanted to try to do it on the back of the plate versus the actual like usable side of the plate. You could absolutely do this on the front of the plate and I did one that way and I'll show you that in a minute. But here, the reason I did it backwards is so that when I etch it on and you flip the plate over, then you're going to be able to see it clearly. Now to do this, I'm using Armor Etch, which is a glass etching cream. And I always get a ton of questions on this when I use it. So what you do is you just take a paintbrush, paint on a decent coat and let it sit for 15 minutes. While it's sitting, there's gonna be a chemical reaction between the etching cream and the glass that allows it to eat into the glass. It sounds kind of scary, but it's not. It's super easy. And then you're just going to take some warm water and rinse it all off. And then it has eaten into the plate enough that you can see the lettering, but it's not anything that you're going to have to worry about for care. So you're going to be able to put this in your dishwasher, no problem. You could make a set of these as appetizer plates for your Christmas dinner. You could make Santa plates. You could also sell these if you have a business but i think these are awesome this one i just cut a big santa face from kaluuya designs and i think i'll be using this at our upcoming party for some christmas goodies i also like that it's not vinyl you don't have to worry about it coming off and the dishwasher safe piece is huge 
Now let's shift gears and talk about heat transfer vinyl. So you've probably seen these before, but I wanted to show you how easy they are to make with Dollar Tree items. Now for heat transfer vinyl, the key here is that you're going to want to cut it on the mirrored setting. So in Cricut Design Space, here's what it looks like. You're going to go right before you cut and there's this little toggle that you click to mirror. Now when you put it into your machine, you want to make sure that your shiny side goes down. They both look kind of shiny, but there's a really shiny side that goes down. And that is going to be your protective sheet to not burn your heat transfer vinyl when you go to use it. Once it's all weeded, then you're going to put it onto your fabric or whatever you're using to get it to fit. And then I like to press it at 320 degrees for 30 seconds to make sure it sets. Now I'm using easy weed here, so I like to peel it cool. So let it cool down, peel it off, and you've got a really cute pocket that you can add whatever you want. You could do some hot cocoa. You could do a little cookie mix bag like I'm doing here. This also came from Dollar Tree. You could add some of those spatulas we had before, tie on a little whisk. Tons of different options, but this is a really quick and easy thing to throw together if you forgot your bus driver or your neighbor. All of those people that you want to look like you, you know, made an effort, but you may have forgotten, this is an easy way to throw it together with some heat transfer vinyl. Up next are these really cute framed reindeer inspired prints. This started with two five by seven canvases from the crafter square section. You could use whatever size you can find. Also, if you can't find these at Dollar Tree or you wanna do something bigger, you could do the same thought process with larger ones from craft stores. Take a flathead screwdriver, pop up those little staples, and then I used pliers to get them out the rest of the way and removed the canvas. Set your canvas aside and paint or stain your frames in whatever color that you want. So then here I'm going to show you how I added the fun little pops of red. So here are my two files that I've imported that you can grab from my blog. And I added a circle shape and just sized it so that it would look good on my reindeer. I have both of these sized to my frame already. And then I also did an oval over the O in Rudolph so that I could cut them both out in red. And I'm selecting red up next to basic cut. That's just going to separate the mats for me. Then I'm going to cut and weed them just like I did the pot holders. I'm cutting these on black vinyl. And then I'm going to do the same thing, 320 degrees on my heat press for 30 seconds. You can also use an iron if you don't have a heat press. And then once that's done, I am peeling everything off and layering that little red piece on. I only press that for about 10 seconds, just so then that way it doesn't get too pushed down and too hot. Once that's done, attach your canvas back onto your frame with some hot glue and you are good to go. These are so fun and festive, easy to put together, and you could do whatever SVG you want on them, but then you've got a nice pretty wood frame as well. Now we're gonna use those same techniques with heat transfer vinyl, but make a bigger project like this hot chocolate bar sign. I grabbed one of these burlap sacks from Juncture at Dollar Tree and then I also grabbed two of their wood pieces because they're starting to expand what they offer in the crafter square section. I liked those pieces because I thought they could be the top and bottom of my scroll hanging sign. I cut the back off the bag because there wasn't any print on it and then I laid out my pieces of wood to make sure everything was the right size. I took my two pieces of wood outside and stained them in dark walnut. You could paint or stain them however you wish. And then I also cut out this hot chocolate bar SVG that was part of that big design bundles packet I've been referencing throughout the video. Then I took my heat press and just ironed out any of the wrinkles on my bag piece. And then I added my decal to it and pressed it just like everything else, 320 degrees for 30 seconds. Now, because this decal, now because this piece of vinyl is larger than my press, I have to do 30 seconds, move it until I cover everything. So you might have to do multiple ones, but then I let it cool, peeled it off, and then I trimmed the edges to make sure everything looked clean and cohesive. 
When that was done, I placed my two pieces of wood where I wanted them. I added some hot glue, making sure not to put it all the way to the ends because it was overhanging the canvas. Did the same thing at the bottom, trimmed any excess, and then used the same. And then I used my same hot glue jute twine hanging technique that I've been using throughout the video to allow it to be hung on the wall. This is such a cute $4 DIY, so under five bucks. And I really like that it is neutral colors so I can leave it up well past Christmas over the hot cocoa bar cause it's cold here in Illinois till at least March at a minimum. I put it over our little Keurig bar cart and it is a cute little addition to this corner of our house. <laughs> If you've been following along this Christmas season, you know that I've been loving adding gingerbread and baking things to my dining room. And so I wanted to make some DIY placemat pillows. I make these every year, but I think they're so cute and I wanna make sure you guys know about them. So I cut out this big gingerbread file on heat transfer vinyl, same process we've been using the whole time, weeded it and pressed it onto this placemat. Now you can get placemats anywhere. You can also use napkins, you can use fabric. There are a ton of different options if you can't find this. I also decided to design and use this Tis the Season to Bake Cookies file because I thought this covered really well, especially with the rolling pin and whisk. Now I put those two to the side to cool and once they did, I grabbed two more. So I've got four placemats in total. And I'm gonna start by kind of hemming one of the edges only because, because they're Dollar Tree, of course they're not the same size. So I had to get a little bit of fabric off. But no worries, once I did that, I wanted to add some of these super cute pom-poms I found at the beginning of the year. I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do with them and then I thought white pom-poms on these pillows would look adorable. So I just cut some pieces to align with the top, bottom, left, and right of my pillow. And I'm just using my little detail hot glue gun as well as my little finger protector also from Dollar Tree to get everything glued on. And I'm going around the entire pillow until it's covered. Once that was done, I went back through with my larger glue gun and glued all of it but a small hole at the bottom to allow me to stuff it. I filled it with polyfill from leftover pillows. You can use whatever you want. And then I added some more hot glue and used clamps to hook the bottom back together. I think those little pom-poms add such an extra little piece of Christmas whimsy. These will go super great in my dining room. I'm putting them under the tree kind of as faux presents. And I also used this gingerbread file on a big sign in my last Cricut video, but that one is now living in my kitchen. You have made it to the end. It is project number 20 and I'm real excited about these. I found these awesome long sleeve red t-shirts in Dollar Tree and they were my size. They weren't crazy large or crazy small and so I knew I wanted to screen print them. I found a variety of really cute Christmas movie inspired designs and I decided to screen print them with some white onto these shirts. Now for the screen printing piece, I won't go into super detail today because I have a full video on supplies and where to get your screens and what I use and all the links and all that fun stuff already on my channel. And so I will link that video if you're interested in learning more about screen printing. I take my screen and my permanent vinyl that I've cut out my decal on backwards, I apply it to my screen and then I get it all set up, apply some ink and screen print it. After it is printed, then I let it dry. I like to do overnight, but four hours is usually it will be fully dry. I put a Teflon sheet over the top and I press it at 320 degrees with my heat press for about 40 seconds. Again, you might have to move it around if your press isn't as big as your shirt, but then these come out great. I made all three of these shirts for literally three bucks because I had all of the other supplies and I love it. The screen printing kit is an initial investment, but it's still under, I think $35. And with the ink and stuff to make these shirts that you like versus having to buy them is awesome. So don't sleep on the Dollar Tree shirts. You can think the same way about Walmart ones or if Target has clearance, get those cheap shirts and put whatever you want on them. 
Thanks so much for watching and a huge thank you to Ana Luisa Jewelry for partnering with me for today's video. Head down to the description. There's a link and more information down there for you. Also, if you're new, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a future whiskey and what video and I will catch y'all in the next one. Bye.